my dad, they lived in Jamestown, then they lived in Falconer, then they lived in Frewsburg, then they lived in Bemis Point. In your days at Celron School, did your paths cross with Lucille Balls at all? Lucille Ball was my babysitter. <laughs> no. Really? No. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Tell me about that. I don't know nothing about that. I was too young. <laughs> Who told you that? Who was the, my mother? Well, there you go. You got very close to celebrity then. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't know it, but yeah. December seventh, nineteen forty-one. A date which will live in infamy. I remember that the whole country got into a mess. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. And which, which, where did you go for basic? Ellis Island. Smallest and most versatile of the four armed forces of the United States in World War II was the United States Coast Guard. Wherever Americans fought, and American ships went, the Coast Guard proved this versatility, contributing effectively to the defeat of Italy, Germany, and Japan. I went to Eaton's Neck, Long Island. Mm -hmm. and that was a small boat harbor. Okay. I went to Baltimore, Maryland for school to become a machinist mate. How long were you there, do you remember? Oh, probably about three months. Then from Baltimore off to? From Baltimore back to Ellis Island and out to sea. We went from New York, we went to England. We came back from England. Then we went to Italy. Back from Italy, we went to Libya, I think it was, on the African coast. From there, we went through the Panama Canal. Then we went to San Francisco. From San Francisco, we went to the Philippines. What ship were you on at that point? What, what vessel were you on? USS General Mitchell. And what kind of ship was that? It was a transport. Okay. Yeah, originally it was supposed to be an Army Personnel Attack, APA. But then they changed it to just Army Personnel. <laughs> And your principal role at the USS General Mark Mitchell was really troop transport? Yeah. Okay. As you're taking troops over, and were you bringing them back to the United States? Yeah. We bring, took them over, and then we brought them back as casualties. Mostly, we take care of the turbine, and we also take care of the boilers and the uh, water conditioning. Now the turbine would be the central thruster for the, yeah. the, the vessel. Yeah. That would be a, a diesel operated one? No. no, steam. As you're taking the troops over, did you have much interaction with the, the troops themselves? Did you get a sense of their morale oh. and how what they're feeling? Oh yeah, we talked to them. And they, they were all, all, we were all about the same. In that period of time, we were young, we didn't know much, and we just, it was a job, that was it. Was there anxiety, fear factor at all? Did you get a sense of any of that? Not too much. And then as you 
would go over to Italy and bring troops back which were casualties. Did you have much interaction with the troops then and get a feel for no. what it was like? No. no we and they were in a separate compartment, you might as well say. And that was it. As you're going over to uh, Europe, were you in convoys at that time or were you able to go direct shots? We were mostly independent. We would travel in convoy when we were told to, but it was too slow. See, a convoy travels at about, let's say, five miles an hour. And we could, we did 10 miles an hour. And the submarines couldn't catch us. But in a convoy, they could catch us. Well, you would be zigzagging, I'm sure, to avoid the submarines too, right? Oh, yeah. And we got there, and a storm came up. And they told the captain he had to pull the ship out of the harbor, get to the open sea, because they were afraid. So that meant we had to stay on shore. We couldn't get back to the ship. And I had a pair of cowboy boots that I picked up in, I don't know, California or where it was, but anyway, I picked them up someplace. And going back to the ship, they, brought out a tugboat and we all got on the tugboat and we went back to the ship and they had these uh, embargo nets which were just ropes with slats you might as well say and they dropped them over the side and away we went. And they put the ship so that the waves would hit the ship and not us. Not the tugboat. But I couldn't climb the net with the <coughs> cowboy boots. So I took them off and they went in the ocean. Or they went in the Mediterranean Sea. Never to be seen again. <laughs> Never to be seen again. <laughs> I was the only blonde sailor in the company that I was in. And my commanding officer, he was a <coughs> chief, chief postal mate. He decided that Whitey was going to do everything. Whitey. Whitey. He had white hair. Yeah. And all the other guys, they were all dark haired. But he decided I was going to do all. We went to the Philippines, we went to India, we went to Australia. And these, all these ports we dropped off or picked up. Like in Lockman, New Zealand, we picked up a bunch of service wives. They came, they saw, they conquered and howled. 10,000 Australian brides, in fact. They were married to American sailors, or soldiers, I should say. How did that work? I've read a little bit about these uh, service brides. You know, Australia and New Zealand was, was a kind of a, a, a good location for that. Yeah. How did that work? How did you understand how that worked? Well, I didn't think much of it, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I mean, we went there, we went to Sydney, 
and we picked up about 150 wives from Brahms, San Francisco. The captain of our ship, he would not let the crew mix with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. General Omar Bradley's sister, I think it was, uh -huh. she had charge of them. The Japanese have accepted our terms fully. That's the word we've just received from the White House in Washington. You see, the minute it came out, we were gone. And there was no excitement on the ship. So you, you missed all that? You missed everything. Don Kling, people remember Kling Furniture? Yeah. Well, Don Kling, he was on that ship. He was a storekeeper. And George Walsh was a fireman, or, well, he was a city fireman. He was on that ship as a soldier. That oh. I got out of life, I guess. About the only thing. We salute you and thank you for your service. <laughs>